By converting a verb to its te form and then adding a number of different helper verbs to it, you can convey your ideas with so much more nuance. And this week we're going to be looking at the helper verb oku. So if you add the helper verb oku to the end of a te form of a verb, it means that you're doing that verb in preparation for something else. So taberu is to eat. Tabete oku is to eat before you're going to do something else, or you're eating in preparation for doing something else. To see, miru, mite oku is to see or to watch something in preparation for something else. Uh, toru, to take something, totte oku is to take something in preparation for something else. Gomi steru is to take out the trash, gomi stete oku is to take out the trash in preparation for something else. And then suru in a regular verb to do, shite oku is to do something in preparation for something else. Oboeru, a verb to remember something or to learn something. Oboete oku is to remember something for later or to keep something in mind for later. It's going to come in handy later, so I'm keeping it in mind and I'm remembering it for later versus just remembering it. So as you can see with these translations, if uh, it keeps the nuances intact if you add like in preparation for something later to the end of all of these verbs, but like we don't actually talk like that in English and it's very, very wordy <laughs> for translations. So even though that's what the nuance is, um, you shouldn't always necessarily think of it that way. Uh, the in preparation for something later is always implied. You know if somebody gives you the te oku version of a verb, you know that, that they mean to say, well, something else is going to follow logically from my having done this verb. Or there's a reason that I'm doing this verb because something else is going to take place after I've done this verb. So a simpler English way that we can condense <laughs> this te oku concept into English is just adding the phrase for later at the end of, of any sentence. So I'm eating this for later, I'm saving this for later, I'm remembering this for later, I'm doing this for later. So now that we've covered the basics of te oku, on to stage two. Oku itself is a verb and an u verb at that, so it is conjugated as an u verb. So here's a bunch of different ways that I can say tabete oku with different conjugations of that helper verb oku. Tabete okitai, I want to eat this for later. Tabete okanai. I won't eat this for later. Tabete okanakya ikenai. I must eat this for later. Tabete oite kudasai. Please eat this for later. Tabete oita hoga ii. You should eat this for later. Tabete o ko. Let's eat this for later. Now here's the part where I burst your bubble and say that this is not how most uh, Japanese people speak colloquially. I usually never see it as te oku. I usually see it shortened as toku. So it's just a contraction. It's like how we don't say in English cannot and do not. We say can't and don't. Uh, it's just easier and faster to change te oku to toku. So don't let this trip you up too much. Just think of the te form of a verb, replace the te with to and add ku. <laughs> and that's how you get this toku. So back to our former list of conjugations with taberu. Uh, tabetokitai. I want to eat this for later. Instead of tabete okitai, tabetokitai. Tabetokanai, I won't eat this for later. Tabetokanakya ikenai, I must eat this for later. Tabetoite kudasai, please eat this for later. Tabetoita hogai, you should eat this for later. Tabetoko, let's eat this for later. So the te oku version is a little more formal. Um, just kind of like cannot and do not are a little more formal than can't and don't in, in English. So you're much more likely to see te oku in uh, written Japanese and then also just more formal Japanese. You're more likely to see te oku versus toku. But just know that they're both things <laughs> that exist. So here are some full sentences using toku. <laughs> Gomi ste toite. This is actually a line from um, Banpei Kun RX, a Amegami Sama song from like 20 years ago. <laughs> it comes from Gomi Sutete Oide Kudasai. It's just a shorter, more colloquial, formal, less formal speech version of that. So it's, hey, take out the trash, in parentheses, before you do this other thing. Kore itsuka wa yaku ni tatsu kara memo shitoko. Hey, this will come in handy someday. Itsuka wa yaku ni tatsu. Kara, since this will come in handy someday. So, um, memo shitoko, memo shite oku, memo shite oko, memo shitoko. Um, so I'm gonna jot it down for later, in parentheses. Saki ni o bento tabetoita hoga ii yo. 
So saki ni, uh, before you do this other thing, we're hammering home this do this verb before you do something else, before you leave, before you clean up, before you go to ballet class, I don't know. Saki ni something. <laughs> um, o bento, your, your box lunch, your bento, tabe toita hou ga ii, so you should, um, it's best that you eat this um, before you do this other thing. Ryoko ni iku kara, uh, since I am going on vacation, neko ni esa o agetou ka na kya ikenai. So esa o ageru is to give um, food bait, <laughs> uh, to give food to an animal, basically. Esa is like animal food. So esa o ageru, uh, neko ni esa o ageru is give food to the cat or feed the cat. Um, ne neko ni esa o agete o kanakya. Age tokanakya, same thing, this just contraction. Um, I must, ikenai, I must <laughs> feed the cat. Uh, in preparation, in preparation for what? Well, I'm gonna go on a trip. So before I go on this trip, I'm not even really saying before I go on the trip, I'm saying because I'm going on this trip, um, I should or I need to, I must feed my cat before I leave on the trip. That part's implied um, in that tokanakya. Uh, so I need to be sure that my cat is fed because I'm going to go on a trip. Here's one I got off of uh, Japanese internet. Osomatsu-san, dai san ki o tanoshimu tame ni shite okitai mutsu no koto. So because it's written and it's a little more formal, they're doing shite okitai. So shiru is to know something. Shite oku is to know something or later, uh, to make sure that you know this thing in preparation for something. So what are we preparing for this time? Why, why do we need to know these six things, mutsu no koto? Why do we need to know these six things um, in preparation for? For Osomatsu-san Daisanki, the third season of Osomatsu-san, the anime. O tanoshimu tameni, so tanoshimu is to enjoy, tameni is for the sake of, so like, for the sake of enjoying season three of Osomatsu-san, shite okitai, um, want to know <laughs> for later, basically. Things that you should want to know. Mutsu no koto. So six things. Here are six things that you should know. <laughs> basically, it's a clickbait um, article title. Um, here are six things you should know before you watch Osomatsu-san season three, and then in parentheses, so that you can enjoy it properly. Like, we wouldn't include that nuance in our titles. We keep them more condensed and, and like, snappy. But basically, here are six things you should know. <laughs> Osomatsu season three is coming out. Here are six things you should know, <laughs> like, before you watch it. Uh, it's a clickbait article. So to review the model sentences we went over in this video, I have some timestamps in the video description and a pinned comment in the comment section. And hey, don't learn all your Japanese from me. I am but one resource. This is the part of the video where I like to highlight other sources for learning Japanese. And this week, I am featuring Kayo Sensei at Kanji is Easy, the Twitter account. Kaya Sensei tweets excellent graphics showing how to write hiragana, katakana, and kanji beautifully. She also shows the origin of kanji and how their shapes evolved, and she demystifies the sometimes intimidating world of kanji. No matter your level, there's always something to learn about kanji, and Kaya Sensei shows everything with beauty and simplicity. Thanks for watching, and thank you to all the patrons who support this and other series on my channel. For just $2 a month, you can both support the series and get some additional study materials if you want. And I hope that you tune in next week when we cover how to ask someone very politely and casually and rudely to do things for you. Gambatene! <laughs>